All right, what's going on, everybody? Dom and Kate in here. Greg in the building. What's up? What's I'm up? just saying podcast. One of the rare times we have somebody else here. Nikki also here. Woo woo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the top 10 West Coast rappers of all times. Of course, these are our personal lists. That doesn't mean that these going to be y'all lists. These are our lists. Um, so I thought that Nikki brought up a good question as to what we're using to put people on the list, right? That was that right. was the question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your what, what made you ask that? Because I wanted to know. I know your dis- your lists are probably different, so I wanted to know what you guys were looking for individually, and so it could explain why your lists were different. I think that's a good a good question. Um, so for me, at the end of the day. It comes down to my personal preference, right? But it also I also weigh in um, catalog and um, just the amount of material that the person put out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Impact definitely on the culture. Impact on you know the mute the genre, um, and um. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hits. I think hits hits come into par. But at the same okay. time, hits is not the dominating thing. It's like, I look at it like how you would rate an athlete. You okay. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He can make all his baskets, but don't assist other team members. And if he doesn't get a lot of opportunities to shoot, but every time he shoots, he makes a lot, he mm-hmm. still couldn't be the best player to me. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So it just, I think it just depends. So it's, but what about you, G? Yeah, what do you think, Greg? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Like you say, the impact, the, uh, a different style, different sound. And, and uh, the West Coast definitely had a different sound when it, when it first jumped off than the East Coast did at, at the time. Yeah. And that's what made them stand out. Okay. But, uh, and both of us are fans of West Coast music. Big. So I want people to think like, these two East Coast guys trying to critique <laughs> West Coast music, and right. they don't know nothing about it, but we do. I listen okay. to probably ninety percent West Coast on the regular. Well, yeah. wait. Well, how did that happen though? Because you guys are from the East Coast. How did that happen? Okay, I got from him. Yeah, so oh, I have oh, okay. I have a family in LA, mm-hmm. so I got turned on to LA early. And you know what I'm saying? So because we lived um fifteen houses from each other on the mm-hmm. same block, right? We saw each other every day, so we always swap music out or listen to you know music right. at each other's house. So uh that's that's how we got onto the West Coast. Okay. Right. So what's the you wanna start from the bottom up or how how you wanna how you wanna reveal this list? All right, I I I'm gonna start off with this question, all right? Okay. Uh when did the West start making noise in hip hop, and um, who was you feeling first from the West? I mean, so noise is not taking over, but just on the just like making a little buzz. Yeah, like like catching your ear, like man, this is different. Who's this? I would I would probably say eighty eight for me, eighty seven, eighty eight. Yeah, 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 right. Um. And, and I would say, for me, Ice T, definitely NWA. I, I agree with that. I'm gonna say, yeah. uh, at first, probably definitely gonna be Ice T, and then I'm probably Too Short and NWA. Yeah, uh, yeah. those would have first, well, especially Ice T and uh, Too Short was definitely the first two that uh, I started, uh, you know, paying attention to. And then, of course, when NWA hit, definitely them. You know? Yeah. So yeah, it was about '87. 86, 87, around that time. Because I actually had bought the Ron Pays album mm-hmm. and Ice-T uh, Power album. Both of them. Classics to me. Classic. And this was back then, 86, right. 87. Yeah. Right, right. You know? When were you aware, Nikki, of West Coast or, or any, or were you, when, were you ever aware of any difference in music styles <laughs> from location? Well, I'm not a hip hop head, okay. So, however, um, and you, I always say I like the beats to songs. So I'd say, gosh, you know what? I I can't, I can't even recall. Mm-hmm. I would say that I really didn't pay attention to the difference. I mean, I knew it sounded different, right. but I don't think I realized why it sounded different. Girls. You know what I'm saying? Right? Because I'm a girl. Girls, yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that sounds different. 
But why? I mean, now I know. But at that time, well, I mean, I if you know you know the music, my sisters would say sometimes, "Why are you listening to music? It sounds like people gonna do a drive by." Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. uh, Boys in the Hood era. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, okay, that's cool. That's cool. What yeah, else you got? I mean, it was like uh, when 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 the West hit the scene, and then the video started coming, and then you know they dressed different. I mean, everything mm-hmm. was different. I mean the. That's true. And then, you know, because most people was thinking that it was all palm trees and sun, sunshine out there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they got gangs and, you know, these uh, colors and you know, crips in the bloods, and which we had no clue, you know, that even existed until it got brought, you know, to the mainstream mm-hmm. in the videos, you know. Right. You know, they, uh, I mean, even the dress, I mean, the, the, the slang, everything was different. Everything was different, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I got one for you, man. What MC or group had the biggest impact, you think, West Coast? Biggest impact. Mm-hmm. Um, Ever? Or, 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 or I'm going to say what MCs or groups had the biggest impact. I, I would say the biggest impact was NWA. Yeah, yeah, because they, I mean, the West Coast, I mean, Ice-T had it there, but when they came, they just bought it. It, it got it got pushed in your face, right? Yeah, cause right. I, I will agree with that, and um, you know, like with the police brutality, the um, the gang life, they and, really brought that to to the forefront. You know, because you know, really up until they hit the scene, you really didn't get it in your face like that. I mean, it was more like a party party atmosphere, that right. vibe going on. So you thought, yeah. So you thought, <laughs> but but you know, once again, um, like like I said before, with the early to mid '80s, when the crack scene hit, everything changed, including and it affected the music also, because we got away from the dancing and partying, right? Till mm-hmm. you know we're gonna tell it how it is and blah blah blah. What really woke me up was Colors. Yeah, once again, Ice T. Mm-hmm. When and that movie, uh, which Colors, mm-hmm. uh, when that came out and you really started to see right. that the Crips and the Bloods thing was real deal Mm -hmm. uh and on the east coast we didn't have anything like that it wasn't it was so this was like fascinating for me to see Mm -hmm. a lot of people here felt like we can't relate to that that's not what's going on here they didn't pay attention to it but we we paid attention to it real early right you're right about that and and like you say colors definitely because once again that was our first look into what what was going on over there in, in the city you know you know, and like what gangs and you know, you know the cops are like this, and you know, and it was it was just crazy, man. You know, the drive-by shootings with AK-47s that was <laughs> right. unheard of, man. Right. You know, it's right. like where where is this coming from? You know, yeah. So as far as as your list, what would what, you guys number ten? Uh, now listen, man. I don't have this in any particular order. Okay. But on my list, and I'm quite sure, but this is just my personal preferences. Yeah. And uh, I got Snoop as number ten. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And like, and and, and 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 he probably should be higher, but I've got so many favorite rappers from the yeah. West Coast. I mean, really, I, I really need a top twenty-five. But <laughs> you know, um, I got Snoop. And who who do you got for number ten? Uh, number ten, I actually have Kendrick Lamar. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's my number ten. Now, um, I, I think it's still early for him, mm-hmm. uh, but I think that he's done enough thus far to solidify himself on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I've had this talk with you before about Kendrick Lamar. I'm not really a big fan of his. Uh, I, I try to listen to his music, but I just can't get into it. Um, he does be saying some good stuff, but I'm just not feeling it. You know, is he too positive? Is that it? I ain't gonna say too positive, but maybe like with. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like some of the new current um, West Coast uh, rappers, and I yeah. do. But him, I mean, uh, I will listen to his stuff, but I don't prefer it. You know, I prefer more of like uh, Game or um, YG or something like that. As far as the new people, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and um, you know, nothing against him, but you know. His sound is different. From it, it, it is. It is different. And, and, it is and, different. And it just hasn't. Mm-hmm. It hasn't grown on me, you know. And um, but one of my early uh, favorites, which was one of our early favorites, was like a national anthem to us, was Too Short. Was that you your know? number nine? 
Uh, I got Too Short as number five. Okay. You know? What's your number nine? Um, I got Spice One. Okay. Yeah. Who you got? Um, this this may surprise you. Hammer. Yeah. It's yeah. my number nine. Well, you you want to know where I got Hammer at? Where? Number four. Now let's talk about this dude for a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> now the reason why I got Hammer rated so high, I was a big, 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 <laughs> big, big Hammer fan when this guy hit the scene, and. This guy had so much energy. He was just so different. I mean, and and the and the, I mean, his presence was just unbelievable. I mean, the dancing. I mean, he was a trendsetter. I mean, I mean, this 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 guy was just. I mean, he could not miss. You Wait, know? were you guys surprised that he was from the West Coast? Because that sound is completely that's the Bay Area. Different. Were you guys? I wasn't surprised, surprised because. No. Uh, he said it a lot, so yeah, I'm just you know what I mean. But if if I heard, it, yeah, even if okay. if he didn't say it in his music, I would think California, okay. L.A. I would think L.A. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, I, that, gotcha. that was one of my favorites. Uh, you know, or Miami. You know, I would think Miami first. I would have said, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, who was your number nine? You said uh, Spice One. Spice One. So I have Spice One. I have Spice One at six. Yeah. Um, he's one of my favorites too, man. Spice One is, he didn't blow up to, he didn't have a mainstream no. hit, mm -hmm. uh, but he was very talented, skilled, knucklehead though. Yeah. Part of his problem was knucklehead. But this guy had the fire. I mean, for, for he to me, he's one of the best out there, man. I mean, this guy, I mean, his production was through the roof. I mean, his, his, his style, man, was just so raw, man. I mean... You know, Skill level, but roof, hits know. brings him down. And uh, but he's been consistent, mm -hmm. but uh, he's just not. I mean, you know, like I, I think with, with Spice One, he just never really adjusted with the times. He stayed, you know, in that same yeah. box. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's probably why he didn't get further. You know, and he couldn't leave the streets alone. Yeah, that, that's another thing that hurt. Yeah. You know, that's you could you shouldn't be in your forties and still getting shot at and shot. Yeah. Who you got for number eight? Ice T. Okay. Now I know that's, that that may seem like it's a little low. Uh, Ice T, one of the greatest. Uh, heavy, heavy swag. He's more swag than he was actual rap skill. Right now, I'm gonna hit you with this one. I had Ice at number two, man. Whoa, yeah. Now listen, like you say, you this gave a guy, lot of credit for influence. Yeah, this guy, man, had. What well, you know? Why do you think Ice T was so successful, man? In 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 the early '80s, the mid '80s. I think he had a secret advantage because he was born on the East Coast, oh, right? He was able to deliver things in a way that East Coast fans like. Most East Coast guys, New York guys, say they respect Ice T, right? Even back then, right? So he had East Coast and West Coast. A lot of times, East Coast guys said, oh, the West Coast people can't rap, mm -hmm. or they phony, mm -hmm. or, and they just dismissed him. But Ice-T was somebody where people respected him from wherever, right. and it really helped him uh, be able to, I mean, because he took a lot of chances. He did rock music, uh, mm -hmm. poetry. He did a lot of different things, so it helped yeah. him. Um, I mean, like, uh, you're right, and um, you, and a lot of people don't remember, man, he put a lot of people on. You know, he put a lot yeah, of people on. that's true. Uh, and um, if anybody remembers Rhyme Syndicate, his, his his crew back then, most of them were from the East Coast. Right. You know, his production was Africa Islam, who was East Coast. And, um, yeah, he, he had a lot of respect, did a lot of touring with the East Coast. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, acts. So, yeah, definitely, uh, I mean, this guy's just a legend. I mean, the... You even go back to the album covers because you know who was on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, now, was she that? his wife? No. Darlene was just his girlfriend. girlfriend. Right, right, right. He has one son. And, and they got a kid, t one kid together. Yeah. 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 <sighs> oh, that's good times right there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, man. So, who do you have for, who we at, number eight? Yeah. Who you got? Short dog. Okay. Too short. Man, all this is like. It's like this. It like, is. Like, it is. Now but y'all had the same one. people, just in different spaces. It's I five. got short dog at number five. Okay. Yeah, okay. I got short dog at number five, man. Now I, I was on the sh too short very early, 
uh, a lot of people did not like Too Short because his rap style was simple. Right. It was ABC. It was basic. It was easy to follow. That's why I liked it. But that's that, that's made it so. Hit. I mean, his beats, man. I mean, the production, and he did all this himself mostly on, on yeah. the first with the first couple of albums. Yeah. I mean, uh, I loved it, man. I mean, it was different. It was it was different, you know. Uh, it, it was homeboy Freddie B too. Right. Yeah. Right. Now for number eight, I had DJ Quick. Wow. Now, Quick is on my honorable mentions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have Quick on my list, mm -hmm. uh, but Quick is a producer extraordinaire. I just, I didn't think that he had a lot, he didn't add a lot to me on the rap side. Production. I just think on the production yeah. side. What What is it that, I mean, Born and Raised in Compton was Classic. something that we played, we had a single of that, uh -huh. but we had a rental car one time, we had your aunt car one time, a oh, Jeep wow. or something one time. <laughs> And we played that for the whole weekend. Maybe we was coming, maybe, maybe to like the junior prom or something like that. Yeah. We played that for the whole weekend. You know, Anytime we had a vehicle. The, the, <laughs> the reason why I liked him, once again, man, like with Quick, he was he did his own production. Yeah. And, and you know, his own rapping. And uh, I mean, to, to me, like the first two album, uh, the first one, Born and Raised in, in Compton and uh, Way Too Funky, uh, I thought it captured the earth the pretty did. good. It did, you know. It did. It, it really, it really was good. I mean, born and raised in Compton. Tonight, um, this is Compton. I mean that. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, that whole album. Yeah. That whole yeah. album you can play from beginning to end. Definitely. Who you got for number seven? All right. So this is uh, this may surprise you. Uh, number seven, I have Tupac. Well, I got him at number six. We just not meeting. Now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got him at number six. Now, That's if you had so asked tough. me, if you had asked me this question in '95, I would have probably put him at number one. Right. But over time, other people have come up, and uh, you know, I, I think when you when you're separated from something, you can kind of look at it more objectively, mm -hmm. and, and their impact. Uh, he heavily Im impacted. I mean, he's another one born on the East Coast. Uh, a lot of different styles. Mm -hmm. uh, very skilled. Right. Uh, very, very talented. talented. Yes. Very talented. Didn't always pick the best beats. In the beginning, he didn't. Yeah. Wait, so what makes him? Okay, he was born on the East Coast. These, yes. These rappers. New York. Born on the East Coast. What makes them a West Coast rapper then? Because that's where you got to start at. Okay. And, so uh, it, it, it doesn't matter where you were born. It matters where you got your start. Well, that's pretty much what he claimed. It was just like what Ice-T. And he claimed it. You know, that's what he claimed. It. I mean, he lived okay. he he lived here for a time. He lived in New York for a time. Mm -hmm. uh, his family moved around. Mm -hmm. But where even, even though he attended some high school here, mm -hmm. I don't even know if he actually graduated, but if he attended some high school here, attended some high school some other places. Mm -hmm. However... When he got on records, mm -hmm. he was in the West Coast. Okay. So that's what makes him yeah. a West yeah. Coast. Yeah. I mean, that's what I consider him as. He was a roadie for Digital Underground. Yeah, that's how he got He was started. one of the guys in the background doing the Humpty Dance. Right. <laughs> that's West Coast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first album, Tupacalypse Tupac Now. Uh, Interscope Records. Mm -hmm. It's an mm -hmm. L.A. based label. Um so yeah, that he traveled around. Mm -hmm. He got around, right. but I consider him to be a West Coast rapper. Right, right. Okay. I mean, he did use later on in his career. He did use East Coast production, like Easy Moby and a few other people. Now he did use East Coast production on some some of his hits. Right. But you know, a lot of that stuff was West Coast uh, producers. But uh, yeah, just like uh, who's it? is it? Teddy Pendergrass. Who did the Philadelphia sound? Like some of the some of the artists that was in the Philly sound. The the uh, R and B artist, Huff uh, and Gamble was the OJ's. producer, right? Yeah, Huff and Gamble was the, all those people that OJ's. used that production. That is, that didn't necessarily make them Philly artists per se. No, it was just a Philly you know what I mean. That sound. was that Philly sound. sound you know? But with with Tupac, he claimed West Coast. He was the first person I saw throwing up the W. Mm -hmm. Like he he really helped usher in mm -hmm. the uh, what what the media termed the East Coast West Coast rivalry. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, uh, so we on number six? Yeah. Who you got? 
E40. I got Tupac. Okay. Yeah, I got E40. Yeah. Uh, one of my all-time favorites. One of my personal favorites. His style is not for everybody. He raps different. Very. Sometimes he misses the beat completely and then jumps back to it. But that's what made him so successful. Yes. And this guy, I mean. He still it, makes records now to, right. to today. And his stuff, to me, his stuff is even better. And it's better now. It's better. And he started in the 80s. Right. Now, you know, not, not, not to get off our little uh, countdown or count up, you want to you call it. I got a question for you. Uh, the Bay Area, you know. I always look at the Bay Area. I like that. I like that sound. I do too. You know, they were a, a tight knit. I mean, all the MCs seemed to support each other. They, 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 they looked out for each other. They were tight. And uh, the, at, at one time, man, the Bay was bringing the heat, man. Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, no and, and um, they had game too. Yeah, they did, man. Ooh. I mean, because I mean, like, like with Ant Banks and all of you know, it was like a, it, the sound was different, you know. Yeah. You know, because I mean, LA's more Southern California. That's more Northern California. It, it was just a. I, I I love that sound, man. I love it, you know. But uh, let's get back to uh, our countdown, man. On uh, number five, who you got for number five? This this uh this may uh, surprise you. Is it? It's a very surprising person. Hit me. MC Red. <laughs> man, you know, man, you know what, man? We just, we just not there today. Yeah, you know, and you know what? I got Ren. I'm, I'm gonna get back to that one, but I got too short at uh at number five. Yeah, I, I um now Ren, of course, not a big hit maker solo. He's a member of NWA, right? But I thought his skill level uh, was was there. I thought that um, frequently on songs he had the best verse. Now you know that was one of my favorites out of NWA. For yeah, the ball, and he still is. Still yeah. is. I mean, I always thought, especially man, like well, even when Cube left, even when Cube was there and he left, Ren was bringing the heat, man. Oh yeah. And and I mean and I mean and you because you sitting up there listening to the song, man, and you like, damn, who, who had the dopest verse? And they both was bringing the heat, man. I mean, and with that production, oh my god, man. But he he was like, for Ren. And Cube, I got them. I got N.W.A. at number three, and I'm gonna talk about that for a minute because Renning. I mean, like, like when you got Renning, you got Ice Cube. You know, I mean, both of them guys was was was. was I mean, e even when they hit the scene in '88, man. I mean, it was just like wow. You know, I mean, they didn't cut no corners. They just gave it to you, man. You know, the lyric ability was just crazy, man. And the competition, you know, yeah. writing, you know, yeah, and 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 that's why I, I really have, you know, them all the NWA down as number three, including the DOC. I love DOC. Uh, he didn't make my top ten. No, uh, one album. He only had one album. Mm. Uh, he would have been one of the greatest of all time. But see that, and see that's that's the question. What if? That accident never happened to the DLC. Yeah. DLC had a motorcycle accident mm -hmm. in 89 or 90, something like that. Right. And uh, it shattered his vocal cords. Pretty so much. now he kind of talks like this. Yeah. And it, it ended his uh, mm -hmm. rap career. Because, you know, I always said, man, had not been for that accident, this oh, guy yeah. pretty much would have dominated big big time in the, uh, in the 90s. I really we believe. may have not known Snoop Dogg. If it, if, it if, it, if DLC hadn't had an accident right. because they would have put everything into DLC. Right. And they wouldn't even been looking for a Snoop Dogg. No, right. Yeah. Because, see, the, and you're right. And that's why Dre was looking for a new talent. Right. Because, you know, the DLC was always his guy. Right. He brought him in, you know. Right. But, uh, number four. Who you got? Gabe. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Do I got game on the list? Yeah, I love game. Uh, he's another one that's gotten better with time. Right. Uh, initially, they they packaged him with um, G, G Unit, which wasn't a good fit. I didn't think it was a good fit, and it didn't last. Right. After he needed some time to shake things off a little bit, mm -hmm. and he got his own groove, and he is man, just yeah, one of you know, like a uh, game. I don't have him in my top 10, but he's in my top 11. And um, 
this guy, man, what, what I liked about him, you know, he when he got away from G Unit, man, he was able to pick awesome production. I mean, none of his stuff sounds alike. I mean, he's consistent. I mean, he just keeps putting stuff out, man, consistently, and it's all hits. He works with with, with various producers, man, and 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 like I like Game, you know. Like compared to like a lot of the new West Coast rappers today, man, he tries to keep that old school West Coast sound going, and th and that's one of the reasons why he's my favorite, one of my favorite West Coast rappers, you know, right now, the current ones. But at number four, I got Hammer. Yeah. Yeah, Hammer is a, is um is 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 as we said another thing I like I like about Hammer I didn't mention before is that Hammer had an independent grind. Going, he was selling out the trunk of his car. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and also, you know, a lot of people don't know, man. Hammer had a decent uh, contract with Capital because he was he negotiated smartly and was able to get a bigger percentage, you know, because he was doing so well independent at first. Right. That he initially turned them down. Right. You know. But yeah, man. Like I say, I mean, that, that that guy was just unbelievable, man. You know, I mean, for that era, man, he he. He had a major impact. Now, number who we at? Number three. You said you had NWA. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we did that. So two. I got Ice T. Ice T. I mean, you know, uh, Ice Ice T is just one of those rappers. You got a favorite song by Ice T? Uh, um, probably you played yourself. Yeah. Love, I love you played yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that's off the uh, Power album, I believe. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, uh, I was listening to his his music recently, trying to figure out which was his best album. Uh. And I think that the third album was the best album. Iceberg uh, Slim? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I think that was his best album. Um, but Power is, is is really good as well. Well, I differ with you on that one, homie. I like the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. All, but what's the best? Um, I, man, e, e, I mean, even from Ron Pays to Home Invasion, man, original gangster. I mean, yeah. I mean, all of them you can listen to all the way through. Right. You know, and like I said, I, I was a big Ice T fan back, you know, '86 when Six in the Morning was out and Dog in the Wax and stuff like that. You know. And um, party people in the place to be. Dun, 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 dun. Remember that party people? Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, this guy was the man, you know. You know, and you know, I can't pick a favorite album because <laughs> all of them. I guess if I had to pick, it probably would be Power. Yeah, it would be Power. Power, Power, Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number one. Man. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? My number two is Snoop. Okay, okay, I agree with that one. Snoop Doggy Dog. Hell of a, I mean, this guy, that sound, the style, I mean, I mean his voice. I mean, this guy Reinventing was, himself yeah. over and over and I mean, over again. This guy, and you ain't lying about it, it's swag, man. It's like, it's like yeah, he got lady said he got out with that little, little Duval. Yeah. You know, this guy just will not go Going back go and forth with you niggas. Yeah. <laughs> Living my best life. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, he just, if you think about it. This is a Crip inf uh, uh, affiliated mm. person who has been embraced by mainstream America, right? And uh, and he and really, man, he and he was, hasn't changed nothing, right? He he was, I, I really believe, the first one to come out and openly admit, hey, you know, I'm cripping and you know, blah blah blah, and this right. is it, and 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 didn't like like. Like you had rappers on the West Coast that would throw little sub, you know, you know, subdued hints, but this guy just, you know, let you know what the deal was. You know, it was DPG all, you know, DPGC all day. You know, all time favorite Snoop Dogg line for me. Y'all ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> let it be known then. <laughs> At the Source Awards that yeah, year, that guy is just funny, yeah. Man. That took some balls. That took some balls. That guy is funny, man. I, I mean, Snoop is just a talent, unbelievable. I mean, just he had the I, whole show with Martha Stewart. Come on, now. right? Like, right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you say, the longevity through the roof, man. You know, through the roof. What one, one last thing before we leave Snoop? People were worried about him. He caught a, a murder charge, mm -hmm. which that he did not do, but he caught a murder charge. Right. Beat that. Left. 
Death Row Records, went to No Limit, mm-hmm. um, and I felt he went to No Limit for protection, honestly. Uh, because I think that things had gotten physical or, or had the potential to get physical, mm-hmm. and No Limit was a gang as well, and he stayed there for a few years. Mm-hmm. From what I heard, there was some tension between P and Shug, mm-hmm. but nothing, you know, not, he didn't feel that froggy. Right. But he, you know, he may have talked some shit, but ain't nothing happened. Uh, and then Snoop stayed there for a while. I did not like the sound. The sound hit Snoop with that sound. That well, he, he did. He did three uh, albums on No Limit. I didn't like the first one too much, but the second two, he 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 rebounded with the production. Yeah, because the No Limit production could just it just Beats by the Pound. I love Beats by the Pound. Yeah, but it just didn't work with his did his, not with, with his style. Did not work. Yeah, No Limit, Top Dog. I think it was mm-hmm. uh, that one. He got some more West Coast production, and it and it those sessions we ended up getting down from a niggas, which is a Beats by the Pound production. Right, right. But that worked. But yeah, that was right. straight New Orleans bounce. It was vibe. I don't know why it worked, but it did. Yeah, that that, that track is just awesome, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, number one. Right. So I to me, what I have is who I'm deeming as the best West Coast rapper. To me, uh, I think his skill level, I think he has the best diss song ever. Mm-hmm. I think that um, his imagination and storytelling, top notch. Mm-hmm. Impact, top notch. Um, and he can make a record right now. He's got mu- new music out right now. Right. He can make records as long as he can speak. Right. And who's this? Ice Cube. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, 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 I broke him off from NWA because you know they're not a group right. anymore. Um, and his solo success to me was more impactful than what he did yeah, with the group because we thought he was crazy when he um, I did. left the group. I saw this then, thing is over, you know. And then, uh, man, man, the stuff that he did once he left, man, was just. I mean, without Dre's production, it was just unbelievable. Everything was just. From beginning to end, you can right. listen to it from beginning to end. Hits, 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 hits. Right. This guy could not miss, man. Uh, definitely, man. Uh, now, my top ten, number one. Okay. It's not really who was the best, but this is my favorite rapper from the West Coast, which was MC8 of Confidence Most Wanted. Big, big fan for years. I still listen to their stuff today, <coughs> even the current stuff. Yeah, so they're my top 15. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I love Compass Most Wanted. And um, to me, though, Compass Most Wanted, if I, have, if I give an 80s reference, NWA is like Transformers, and Compass Most Wanted is like GoBots. What? To me. No, now, man. listen, I like GoBots. I like Transformers. I just thought that they were very, very similar but different. Uh, well, and listen, it's no slight because Psykill from GoBots, he was the shit. Yeah, but to to to, to me, but he wasn't better than than uh, uh, Megatron. I never compared their sound, like NWA sound, to Congress Most Wanted because to me, they were on different vibes. They were, but similar. You know, both of them wore the khakis. Um, MCA had the jerry curl. Right. Easy had the jerry curl. He brown skin. He brown skin. He's a crip. Yeah, but they in the crip neighborhood. But but MC8 style was completely totally different. different. Yeah, completely totally different. different. Yeah. I mean, his he was more what of a, a, a laid back. Yeah, or, you he know, was more laid back. You know, more laid back. And uh, like I say, the production from Unknown and Slip, man, for the first three albums was through the roof, man. Was through the roof. Yeah, like I say that's why it's my favorite. Man. You you got a favorite album by uh, CMW? If I had to pick one, man. Um, it's probably going to be the first one. It's a confident thing. Now that's a tough one because uh, music I love to music drive, to drive by. Music to drive by. That ugh, they came with the production on that. But if I had to pick between them two, it'd probably be a, it's a confident thing. Uh, honorable mention um, is uh, South Central Cartel. <laughs> I, like I love South Central Cartel. Yeah, I like them guys. And um, I, I thought 
another big record for the West Coast was we all in the same game. Oh, that was huge, man. Yeah. That was huge, man. I mean, uh, because uh, it, it, it was a collecting gathering of some of the top West Coast acts at the time. And right. um, good track. Uh, it was a big hit. Right. It had a lot of video play. I mean, it was kind of like the West Coast answer for um, self-destruction on the East Coast. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a big hit. Big hit, man. Big hit, man. But, like, uh, I'm, I'm just going to give you a couple more names. And this is not in my top. This is um, some other West Coast uh, rappers I like. You know, I already told you game. Uh, I like King T. Yeah, I do too. Warren G. Love Warren G. Dog Pound. Yep. E40. Yeah. I did like E40. Uh, Cypress Hill. Yeah, yeah. Because Be Real, uh, their production was insane, and his voice was just completely different. It was. And, no, I, I mean, ain't heard nothing like his voice. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 this this guy was completely being himself. Um, I like Yo Yo. Yeah. You know. Me too. Um. Now this one might get you, sugar free. <laughs> I like this guy, man. I mean, I mean, he on some different stuff, you know. Yeah. But this guy is, uh, he's different. Yeah. You know, I, I like, I, I like sugar free, and a guy that I thought that had real skills. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened to him, and I thought he had a lot of talent. Was Mac Ten? Like Mac Ten, I think he's a knucklehead though. Yeah. 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 Um, did, 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 this this guy could rhyme though, man. I like Mac Ten. Now, who are some of the current West Coast rappers that you're feeling right now? Like YG. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I love that guy. Uh, creative. Yeah. Funny. You know, definitely. Nipsey Hussle. Mm-hmm. Got both of them on my list. Yeah. Uh, both, both of those guys really, really stand out for me. Mm-hmm. Of course, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Uh, of course, Game. Yeah. I got also, I got Nipsey Hussle. Um, Tiger. I like Tiger. Yeah, yeah, I do. Schoolboy Q. I do. I like him. And another guy I don't know if you're familiar with him, Dizzy Wright. Yeah, I like yeah, him too. I, I, I like Dizzy Wright. So you know, I do listen to some of the uh, new stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's some of it's pretty good, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of some of these guys got a lot of talent, and um, production is is awesome, man. Definitely. Let me ask you a question, man. Why come you didn't think there were um, many female West Coast rappers? Well, the ones that did come out always came out with guys. And so I felt like they were men's vision of females. Right. And I don't think that it it ever was authentic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have like J.J. Fad or um, Oak Towns 357. Right. uh, Which I think is the male's version of what they think that the females should be. Right, um, but you you had uh, you had people like Sugar T, who I liked, who is E Forty's sister, uh, who's the girl that's rapping on Sprinkle Me. Right, um, I liked her. I felt Sugar like T. she was able to do her own thing. Uh, she never blew up. Right, but uh, I, I thought that she was pretty pretty skilled. Okay, uh, she's somebody that stands up. But like, if you think right now, I can't think of a female Me uh, West Coast MC Me right neither. now. Me neither. That's like new. Right. Can you? No. Yeah. Uh, another question, man. Um, what do you think was the best years of West Coast hip hop? I would say ninety one to ninety six. Um. I would say 88 through 96, because really, the reason why I say that is because when N.W.A. hit the scene, Easy e and up until, to me, after Pac got killed, that's when it went down. That's when the South took over, yeah, but right. they had a great run, oh, and man. that was the run. And, and, and CMW. That's, that's when uh, all the money West, really West Side in. Connection. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the movies was, you know, you had Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You had Menace in Society. Right. You had all these movies coming big, and music big, was coming. Big. Yeah, it was it was a big time. Okay. Let, let me ask you one question. Uh, what was the impact of Ruthless and Death Row Records on the hip-hop scene? I thought it was big. I thought it was big. Easy was one of the, the first people I remember. Um <coughs> Not the first, but one of the first, right? To have his label and be an artist on the label, 
and be successful. Ain't right and be yeah. successful. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And then, then uh, and longevity. They had yeah. had a good run. He did. I mean, had not he died, I think they would have continued um, putting out hits because yeah, he made smart uh, uh, production moves, business moves. He uh, could see an artist in, inside. Right. Him. He could recognize talent. Yeah. What about Death Row? Death Row is a tragedy because mm-hmm. I hated the name Death Row first. Right. I thought it pigeonholed him in a box. Uh, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> how you going to be going to a school talking to kids? Mm-hmm. And from Death Row Records, we have, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, the know. logo was somebody get electrocuted. Yeah. It was it was too it was too hood. You know what I mean? And um Right. That was the big that was the biggest problem. What what serious artist is what side of Death Row Records? Oh, Death Row is defunct and no more. Yeah, I'm just saying but, that with uh, a name like that. You know, with the reputation and, and you know, uh I, I always said and me and you talked about this a million times, is I think Death Row class should be taught in business school like for music, trying to go into that business, is a prime example of how not to run a company. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really think it should be taught because this should be a prime example of what not to do and how to run a multi-million dollar business. Right. You know, and, right. you know, it is what it is, man, you know. Who, um, all right, on the West Coast, man, I got one for you. What rappers became um, went on to become big movie stars, man? A, a lot of them from over there. Yeah. Uh, of course, Cube. Ice T. Of course, Ice T. Yeah. Tupac. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tupac definitely. Right. Um, right. Those those three stick right out mm-hmm. um, in mind. I mean, not a big star, but of course, MC Eight has done done some some right. roles. Right. Um, Two Shorts done a few roles. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I you doubt? I mean, they, they in California. So right. Right. that's half the battle right there. Mm-hmm. My last question, man. Um, who was bringing the heat on the West Coast production? Who, you, who was one of your West, favorite West Coast producers? I, I'd probably say Dre. <laughs> man, let's let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, really, man. From what eighty-eight to what early nineties, yeah, ninety-three, ninety-five, whatever it was. This guy I could not miss, man. Yeah. I mean, everything was, uh, especially when he was on Ruthless, everything went platinum. Yeah. Everything. He produced everything. R&B, all the hip-hop acts. I mean, this guy, I mean, his production, I mean, uh, and then, you know, like, in, in that era, which was a heavy sampling era, you know, they, uh, that's what I mean by that West Coast sound, man. They, they, they sampled a lot of uh, a, a good, good 70s R&B. You know, um, they were really digging in the crates with their production, man. You know, it was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have to uh, admit, Dr. Dre too, man. But you know? like you said, I love Ant Banks. Yeah, different, different vibe, different sound. I, I, I like J T. The bigger figure. Mm-hmm. Um, another honorable mention. Uh, Studio Tone was E Forty's producer. Right. Um, I liked a lot of uh, a lot of his sounds. Of course, we said Unknown and Slip. I like their sound. A lot of these guys, Quick, of course. Uh, a lot of these guys just did production for their team and right. didn't really branch out and do a lot of extra production for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Johnny J. Yeah, I was about, about to mention I that. really like Johnny J. Um, Warren G. Warren G. Yeah. QD3 had QD3. some good stuff I liked as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I said. Daz. Man, yeah, yeah. You, 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 ha- you have to put him in there. Yeah. Man. Daz is one of the greatest. Mm-hmm. Knucklehead, yeah. though, but yeah. one of the greatest. V- very talented, though, you know. Yeah. And I would have to say DJ Quick, too. Yes, yeah, yes. DJ Quick, too. Yes. But, yeah, man, that's all I got. And uh, hope y'all enjoyed the show. Absolutely. Uh, stick with us next time, and we'll probably try to do uh, Down South. Ah, I like that. Down right. South next. Down that's what's south. up. All right. We out of here. All right.